Hey, you know what I haven't talked about in a while? Family Guy. There's plenty of material there. So let's pick a random episode here. Um, scrolling through, scrolling through. Ah, meet the Quagmires. Sounds exciting enough. Oh boy, um, so that was an episode. Also, look at my amino. <laughs> So, in my Casa Grande's review at the very end, I allude to Party Pooper J, a fancy way of me pointing out something sad with my line of reasoning. Similar to that one time I did a Fairly Odd Parents review where I pointed out that if Trixie is only used for one thing and they deliver that one thing and it feasibly wouldn't work if she did that one thing, then her character is ruined. This is going to be one of those episodes. It starts out with Peter and his friends talking about the good old days. And no, they aren't talking about the first few seasons of Family Guy, but actually when they were young and wild. Like guys are, right? No. Peter starts to vent, complaining about how he never got to experience what it was like to be 18, single, and wild. He wishes that he can go back in time and experience that, but obviously while keeping his marriage intact, just so that he can have some memories to go back on. Oh my god. I just love the fact that he leaned forward to fix the TV, but fell backwards to knock himself out. You'd think with the lack of coordination, it would have been less trouble to just whack the TV with the ladder. Anyway, Dev comes and since Steph and Peter have an interesting relationship, he allows Peter to go back in time and relive his days in 1984. Apparently at this time, he was a towel boy, but also dating Lois, who looks really nice here. Lois, we got the rest of our lives for me to not hear a word you just said, but tonight I got plans with Cleveland. But we had a date. This starts the path of Peter being apathetic towards Lois's advances. And the episode does something clever here. The clever mistake in Peter's reasoning here is that while people may see him as 18, he's operating from his future day, or would it still be present day? Anyway, normal age mindset, which already has the memories of him being with Lois for a decade plus. Because of that, his drive to get Lois is incredibly low because he's already operating from the mindset that he has Lois. And even if he didn't, he already got that whole wanting to get Lois out of his system and his drive to date and potentially marry her in the future is low. Had this had been an 18 year old Peter and an 18 year old Peter's body, I like to imagine that he would have never blown off Lois. He would have dated her because at the time, this is what he wanted. Also, small time travel question. If people see Peter as he was in 1984, then what do people see of Brian? So, uh, have you seen Ghostbusters? Save your breath, Geekwad. I'm here with my boyfriend. You mean that quintessentially 80s guy with his collar turned up all the way? Are you hitting on my girlfriend? Apparently they see Brian as Brian, not as nothing, or would it be a reverse ghost? Because a ghost is someone who died, so if they weren't born yet, does that make them, or does that even make sense, a reverse ghost? Also, Geekwad, that's a very funny phrase there. I may need to use that sometime. So Peter, being at the bar, makes out with Molly Ringwald. Unfortunately, his time is up and he gets teleported back. Unfortunately for Peter, he doesn't know that his timeline is now messed with and that he'd actually end up wedding another. Honey, you awake? Morning, sweetie. Ah! Who the hell are you? What are you doing in my bed? Peter, it's me. Molly, your wife? Molly Ringwald? Actually, it's Molly Griffin, but more importantly, what? So apparently the way that death or the powers that be determine time travel is that it's based off of your last day. That's either really great or really sad. And either way, what? What the fuck? I guess this is a nitpick, but you're telling me that Molly Ringwald, who in the episode is described as the biggest actor in Hollywood, would settle down with Peter, who was described in that moment as a random bar guy. I'm not saying that they probably didn't have a great marriage up to this point, but I'd like to believe that the biggest star in Hollywood, who wanted to hook up with random bar guys, would most likely continue to hook up with random bar guys. It's not like the episode showed us any inklings that they'd be a great couple. Peter naturally freaks out, and Brian says that this might have something to do with when they traveled back in time. 
Lois, what the hell? I'm gone for one night and you sleep with Quagmire? Mr. Griffin, what I do with my husband is none of your business. Husband? Morning, Pete. I guess he missed the fact that by his own logic, he's been sleeping behind Lois's back for about 20 years and also wed someone. The big twist here is that Quagmire, whom we never saw in the flashback to the 80s so far, marries Lois because of Peter blowing her off the chill in the club slash bar. I suppose if you were to compare it to modern day Quagmire, you'd think that there'd be some serious compatibility issues, and you may be right. Lois is no picture of pure, clean morals. However, she isn't often written to be as crazy as Quagmire, and the show's intentions are generally to portray Lois as being above Quagmire in terms of status, who's cleaner, regardless of the episodes that may show her to not be that way. The thing is, throughout this entire episode, Quagmire's fine. He seems to be satisfied with one person this time, and one person only. And on top of that, Lois seems to be perfectly okay with Quagmire. Think of the episodes where Lois and Quagmire had tension and butted heads to come to an alternate reality where they are okay with each other. Brian essentially explains what he already said to Peter before, and Peter and Molly have dinner at Quagmire and Lois's house. Peter gets one heartfelt moment when he realizes that Chris and Stewie are now Quagmire's children. And then we get Peter and the new Lois speaking to each other for the first time. It's a little late for that, don't you think, Peter? I mean, there was a time back when we dated that I thought you might be the one. But as I recall, you were more interested in partying with your friends. Then Glenn came along and stole my heart. <laughs> It hurts to see it. However, wearing my party pooper hat, does present day Peter deserve this? No. Does present day Peter going back to the past deserve this? Honestly? Actually? No lie? Personally? I don't know. I mean, yes, he did do what he did, but that was one day. I guess I'm trying to say that I find it hard to sympathize with Peter here. Even though I've been glossing over the cutaways, the Jetsons one will always be a classic. Then the episode goes out of its way to state a few things. With President Gore's universal health care, people are living much longer these days. And with zero tolerance gun control and a strong, well-funded educational system, there's no street crime. Face it, Peter, you not marrying Lois was the best thing that ever happened to the world. I don't care. And that's kind of the issue here. You know how critics of Modern Family Guy note its failure to talk about complex issues effectively? Well, here's a great example of when they could. Would you marry the love of your life if you knew the alternative would make everyone in the world be in an immensely better place? And that's not a simple question. And the way it's portrayed here is actually well done. Now the events leading up to this, questionable. But how the atmosphere in Quahog seems a little happier, it works for the story and makes things interesting. Should you sympathize with Peter and his efforts? Well, that's a complex question, that's up to you. Do I? If the episode stopped right here, yes. However, that's not the end of all of these tiny revelations. So Peter gets a chance to go back in time due to the sheer luck, mind you, and once he's back in time, he does exactly the thing you do when you see the love of your life with your best friend and your children being from someone else now. Zap sucks. Why don't we go see Krull? Peter, you know I'm dying to see Zapped. I would much prefer Krull. Well, maybe you should just go by yourself. Well, maybe I will. Fine. Crap. Death! What? One more time. I know that we can write off Peter's behavior as being absent-minded or stupid, but if Peter is supposed to be the guy that we are rooting for, why do I care about his carelessness? This isn't even like the scenes coming up where he was tempted with another offer. He's portraying himself to only want Lois once she is with someone else, but then doesn't have that drive to seal the deal in her face. He ends up failing multiple times, and we, the audience, are supposed to go, Go, Peter! You can do it! I'm sitting over here saying, No, 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 nah, fam. You had your chance. And plus, the world is a better place when you don't try, so continue messing up. And to those who may say, well, Jay, you're not supposed to root for Peter. Then why am I watching this? Why is my protagonist unwatchable on top of being careless and proven to be a negative impact on the world because of his selfish action? This isn't like Squidbillies or Ed, Ed and Eddie, where yes, the protagonist can be harsh and unlikable to some, but there is something to them that you enjoy when watching them. This episode goes out of its way to tell me three things, clearly. One, Peter can't hold his attention long enough in one take to be with Lois, 
Two, because Lois is with Quagmire, she's happy, and Quagmire's happy, and Peter was happy when he was having fun in bars. And lastly, three, despite the world being in an incredibly better place, Peter determines that because he wants Lois, he should manipulate time to have her. Peter confronts Lois, and Lois tells him to essentially leave her be. She's going to the dance with Quagmire. I don't feel bad, especially because he gets distracted again. Peter used to be so passionate. Suddenly, he just doesn't seem very interested in me anymore. Lois, if I may speak freely, as a friend, you deserve better than Peter. You deserve a gentleman. Putting all of the r slash nice guy jokes aside, he's not wrong. It's not like Lois has made any unreasonable demands. She was interested in Peter. She gave Peter a chance. She clearly still has feelings for Peter from the way that she talks about him to Quagmire. Quagmire picked up where Peter left off. It's actually crazy to believe that Quagmire and Peter would be best friends after this. I do have to say, I am not saying that Quagmire and Lois are a great couple and that I ship them. Firstly, shipping in Family Guy is like playing Call of Duty on the Wii. I don't do it, I don't know anyone else who does it, but I respect your dedication. Secondly, all I'm saying here is that Quagmire and Lois have proven to be a fine couple who seem happy with each other. It's definitely a weird couple for sure, I can't deny the compatibility here. And side note, all of this 80s music? Great. I know this is supposed to heavily feature elements of Back to the Future, as well as having cast members of The Breakfast Club, and Axel F and Michael Jackson's Thriller suit, and I love it all. Something poked me. It's okay, it's okay. It's just my wang. Wait, what? That's not what he says. Is the demonetization filter on for this episode? Actually, in hindsight, now that I think about it, there was supposed to be a joke about Brian telling that collared up dude to meet him at the top of the World Trade Center on a specific date in 2001. That was also edited out. Wow, it really changes a lot of the perspective of the show. They sneak in and Brian becomes the lead guitarist and vocalist of the group. Meanwhile, Peter tries to sneak in a dance with Lois, but Lois makes it crystal clear that she wants Quagmire and she wants Peter, again, to leave him be. So what does Peter do to prove that he loves Lois? Hey, Quagmire. I'm huh? Just a fool, a fool in love with Sorry, Lois, but I have to do this. All right. <laughs> so what do we learn today, kids? Lois is very shallow. Your good friend just got knocked out, dude. I guess this is supposed to be romantic, but it looks crazy. Again, Peter has failed on top of failed, on top of screwed up, on top of forgot, on top of being ultimately careless throughout this entire episode, being a bumbling idiot, stumbling like I did earlier in this line, his way through trying to prove himself, only the punch the only guy, literally the only guy <laughs> who has shown that level of care, like, I'm sorry, this doesn't prove that they should be married. It only proves that the status quo can ruin a character dynamic just like that. It's also interesting that Quagmire and Peter personally never interact. They only interact through Lois, and I guess this is supposed to preserve some relationship they'd end up having, but like, holy crap, Peter does not deserve Lois in the slightest from this point on. And what really kills this scene for me is that it isn't about morals. Be raunchy, be offensive, be edgy all you like for 2007 standards that's not this this has been a dumb love story with only a sprinkle of edgy humor here and there this is played out to be serious and you're supposed to be engrossed in the tale of peter and lois this is not played out to be dumb you are supposed to take the motivations of these characters in a not silly light so if we are to be real here nothing peter did here shouts passion more selfishness Brian Rick rolls the audience before we go back to the present, and Lois reacts to this whole story. And I'm touched that you went through so much trouble just to be with me. Obviously, I made the right choice when I married you. Oh, Lois, you're such a geek wad. Anyway, that was Meet the Quagmires. Don't get me wrong, Peter and Lois' present day are great, and this episode had great references, great humor, I enjoyed the non-major characters a ton. However, if we were to look at this as a serious love story, which is the way that it's portrayed, then you'd have a hard time convincing me that Peter deserves Lois from that point on, regardless of what she says. This is a great example of how status quo can really mess up a character character. Special thanks to the supporters of November. And if you want to see a better example of character dynamics, then check out Brian and Stewie. I talk about that episode here. Until next time, guys.
Take care. Alpha out.